Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and we're continuing Adept August with the Penitent Dungeons from Adeptus Sororitas. The crazed absolution-seeking battlewalker. You're a crazed absolution-seeking battlewalker. So these things are pretty terrifying. These things look really painful. Uh, they look like you have to have done something really bad to get stuck inside one. And I think they are further proof that just because you're close to the God Emperor of mankind doesn't mean you're going to be a good person or do good things. You're just going to do whatever it takes to protect the God Emperor of mankind. Let's have a closer look at these beasties. Sometimes Warhammer do creepy weirdness really well. Look at this. Madness. I love the flail. Sort of right up there in midair, right at its sort of arc of abuse that it's about to lay down. This amazing um, circular saw on the left arm with a flamer unit as well attached to that, I'm not sure. Could be a power unit. That's definitely something flamey over there. That beautiful uh, paint job on it. And this per controller in the middle of it. Oh, flames burning away at the top too. That's that's cool. Some really nice paint effects possible there. And the same over here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is not gorgeous. It's terrifying. Uh, and then it looks like an alternate build. So this is the crazed absolution seeking battle walker. Or maybe they're all called the crazed ups. Oh no, sorry. They are all called crazed absolution seeking battle walkers. <laughs> but this is a mortifier and this is a penitent engine. So two alternate builds here. Maybe I'll do one of each. Maybe I'll check out what they look like in the flesh. Very much looks like this is kind of a sarcophagus look, but you can also go for the Repentia pilots here and here. Or with the Penitent Engine, you can go for these poor dudes here and here. And so that's called the Penitent Buzzblade. You got the Heavy Flamer, and then some detail on the back there too. And over here with the uh, Mortifier option, You've got the heavy bolter. All right, let's get into it. Three sprues. All right. Okay. Larger bases. I stand corrected. Four sprues. Okay, so these are duplicates, and I'm imagining these are duplicates as well. Yep. Okay. So let's just look at this one in a sec. We have the patent engines. Uh, you can see the mortifier option down below. Full color, all the glue points shown in yellow. We can see our uh, alternates here, our options for the patent engines, patent engine plus mortifier, and then the two mortifiers. Maybe I'll go for this middle one to give me that variety. And then all the different builds to follow for whichever setup you're going with. Um, quite a lot of pages for this one, to be honest. There's quite a lot going on in here for, for two miniatures, but we'll see. Perhaps it's just a lot of um, weapons variations. Uh, certainly we've got, let me see. Heavy flamers, this pen and bud sorry, the penitent buzz blade, the flail. I know there was the heavy bolter as well. So I guess we'll see. Let's see what that looks like. And here we go. There is a lot going on in this sprue. Looks like the bodies are split in half. So that could lead to some interesting mold lines, but we'll have to see. Don't want to pass judgment too early on that one. Got that sort of sarcophagus look there. That's the heavy flamer. Oh, wow, look at the detail on that central thing. 
whatever that is. And it looks like a bunch of accessories. I think those look like grenade launchers. Yeah, they look like kind of skinny grenade launchers. The rest of the structure of the pennant engine. <clears throat> and then we have the rest of the structure of the pennant engine there. Some beautiful sculpting in this. I love this very ornate top part as well with the gaps between each of the sort of spines of it. You have to be careful with that one. <laughs> That'd be the, just the worst thing to damage something as beautifully sculpted as that. But looking really interesting. And then the other two sprues there, there are identical. Okay, so let's go get it built. Okay, here they are, fully built up, the pennant and engines for Adeptus Rotas from Warhammer 40k. And I've got to say, they are freaky looking, <laughs> like I thought they were going to be. They, these things are insane. And they're beautiful in a way. I mean, they're, they're beautifully designed. Uh, they, they, they went together really straightforward, so they were not, not the most um, exciting building experience. But the miniatures that are in front of you are hauntingly beautiful in a cybernetic, distorted future where everything's terrible and everything hurts, but yet you get pumped full of stims and you go off and kill your enemies kind of way. What I noticed with these is something that I'm, I'm noticing more and more with Warhammer, is that while the building experience may not be sort of phenomenally interesting, process of sticking this bit to that bit. There's going to be nothing new for anyone there. The instructions are very clear. They're, it's, it really is sort of grim, dark Lego when you look at the instruction manuals. But what you do notice as you're putting these, cutting them off the sprue and cleaning up the components, you know, how beautiful all the details are. How intricate these miniatures are. The the tiny cogs, the rivets, the little vents, tiny little holes between sort of even the, the cabling on the arm here. And then you see the organic stuff, this, the way they merge this, this horrendous machine, this horrendous but incredible machine with organic matter in the, the form of this body that's all strapped up and tubed up and all the stims going straight into their spinal cord to make them a more efficient you know, operator. It is uh, incredible. So yeah, while the process of building is not, not anything extraordinary, the exposure to the details as you clean the components just gives you that whole new respect for what Games Workshop are doing here. You have some flexibility as to where you, you know, how you position the arms. There's definitely a lot of um, weapons options here. That all the weapons here seem to have like a dual function. You've got this flail, as well as this with that uh, a storm boulder. I'm not sure, heavy boulder, storm boulder. And same over here. And the first one had these pennant and buzz saws. That what that's called. And then the double flamer, and the same over here. Let me just check the names of those weapons. Uh, pennant and buzz blade, and a heavy bolter, yeah. So we've got the heavy flamer here with the pennant and buzz blade, yeah. And then the pennant and flails with the heavy bolter on either side. And yeah, you can see they're in sort of a, a running pose here. I, I guess you can have them standing, doing not, you know, just sort of standing with both feet in the ground. Yeah, you can. But I wanted both of these to seem like they were legging it across the battlefield, getting, you know, ready to all, all stimmed up and ready to get stuck in. I just thought they were, they, they've, they've come out really cool. And you can see the difference in the operator here. You can see all those like stim capsules are sticking into their chest. And they are in, in what look like sort of half coffins. 
There are other options to sort of have them completely enclosed. You can see it here on the box. But I prefer to be able to see the... Um, <laughs> I prefer to see the horror <laughs> of living in something like this, however briefly. But that is them. That is the Penitent Engines from the Adeptus Rortas. Very cool walkers uh, for such big creations. They're lovely and agile. I'll just grab you a Dreadnought to give you scale. You can see it here. So taller than a Dreadnought, but considerably less chunky. Uh, but gives the feeling that it will be a lot quicker. Just, just you know, from uh, visually, they look a lot quicker. They just look a lot more intricate, perhaps a bit more fragile, but I'd say that'd be an interesting fight. No fear of Pennant and Dungeons replacing Dreadnoughts as my favorite walkers, but I have a lot of respect for these creations. They are beautifully sculpted. They've come out of the cast <laughs> near to perfect and um, were interesting to build because of just the exposure to all those beautiful fine details yeah big thumbs up for these and that wraps it up for the penitent engines as we continue adeptus sororitas august on gray primer tomorrow i am back with junith yuruida yuruida your name annoys me junith and i will see just what it's like to ride a swan parade float into battle i guess <laughs> that miniature hey i hope you're enjoying these videos Please like, share, and subscribe if you do. I will also post um, links to the other videos in this series in the show notes below. And you can check those out. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye.